Island Sailing Club now has a green thumb. The club donated this land to the Department of Environment to grow and replant mangroves. Well, this is probably the final stage of a, of a, of a year-long or two-year-long project now uh, that was originally funded by the NMBCA. Um, and we are putting out mangroves now out into the, uh, into the, the natural environment, having grown them in a nursery environment for the last 18 months. It's pure hard work from now. Everything's finished. It's li basically lifting up the units from behind me in the nursery here, loading them onto trucks and physically carrying them out to the, the predefined pre sites. So and we're making mangrove islands rather than doing something linear, we're trying to keep it natural. We're doing clumps of mangrove islands, which we hope will establish and eventually um, expand out. I'm excited that this is actually the second phase of, or I think anyway, of what seems to be a project to try to restore some of the mangrove that was uh, destroyed in the hurricane. And 18 months ago, we were asked by the Department of Environment, a lot of students from the school came as volunteers, to help plant shoots from mangrove shoots and to plant them somewhere where they were hoping they'd have a successful growth rate. And so basically we showed up, got very dirty, did some planting, did some, uh, used some of these small reef balls, I guess they're called, and uh, planted various sizes of shoots to hope that uh, some of them would grow and you can see from behind me that it's obviously been quite successful. The Reef Ball Foundation is an NGO working in more than 56 different countries to do reef and mangrove restoration projects. We came down here because the Department of Environment wanted us to start a mangrove restoration project because um, a large party of all the mangroves on the island have been destroyed during uh, Hurricane Ivan in 2004. So we are here to try to restore the different habitats that are offered by the mangroves. Mangroves are a key element in any coastal environment because they're going to provide nearshore protection, they're going to provide nursery habitat for the juvenile fish and they're also going to provide a lot of nutrients for the reefs. Um, so this is why it's very important to have a healthy mangrove community. The habitat cannot be restored by themselves because on Cayman Island you have very high energy um, waves coming on the island. So uh, we need to use this technique to restore um, the mangroves. The way it worked to my recollection is that we would put some dirt in the planter there. Well, we would line it first of all uh, with a netting so that the dirt wouldn't come out. We would put some dirt in it and then we'd put, we'd put some food, but we'd also plant uh, different sort of uh, types of, of shoots in the sense that some of them were very, very healthy and obviously had a very good chance of growing. And there was a couple that we planted that maybe were not, we weren't quite sure if they would be as successful, but obviously they have been. So it's, I guess, just sort of a way to try to encourage the best possible growth without just putting only the, the most healthy shoots. Here's a selection of, the, of some of the mangroves. Uh, the original the unit, the reef ball unit that we're using in the first phase uh, has a, t a tin bottom or a metal bottom that will rust out so the roots can go through and also provide iron at the same time. Um, the concrete is uh, made of, of concrete that is uh, basically acceptable for the environment. The pH has been balanced. It, although it's not the most attractive thing in the world, it's not, uh, it's not deleterious. We put three or four proper gills into each of the, of the mangrove pots because we were expecting uh, some die off but we, uh, the survivability was remarkable, so you can see like, on this one all three survived. Uh, this is a good example here where one didn't make it, but that was actually intended. We probably only needed one plant per pot to survive, but uh, you know, three or four is, is, is good, so eventually one of those, of course, will dominate. They have aerial prop roots, and um, you can see prop roots just starting here. We, we expect these to reach out over the side of the pot, so eventually the, the entire pot will be incorporated. Um, this is one just starting here. And as these get bigger, these will sink into the mud and disappear altogether. The cap that's on here just prevents the soil washing out if you get rough conditions. There'll be a rebar pin that goes through here that secures the whole thing to the bottom. You can see it's got a very wide base, so it's hydrodynamically stable, doesn't get washed over very easily. Um, and this layer here has been mixed uh, with a few additives that make it very brittle. So as the tree expands, that'll just crack and, and disappear. I'm going to volunteer every time. I just really, really have a passion for the environment. I love the island. I consider it my home. And um, I was here during Hurricane Ivan and I saw the difference between the mangroves before and after. And anything we can do to help restore that, I think is fantastic. Next up, the Department of Environment plans to restore the mangroves along South Sound. As you can see, dozens of dry, brittle branches are still lining the coast.